I'm going to stop. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're just now letting people in. So we'll wait a couple minutes before getting started. Um, but in the meantime, if you'd like to write your name and where you're dialing in from in the chat, please feel free. It's always great to see where everyone's calling in from. And I'd also like to point out that we do have a simultaneous translation available to Spanish and you can access it just by clicking the little world emoji at the bottom of the screen where it says interpretation. Okay, so it sounds like um, people have started joining. Um, thank you again, everyone, for um, joining this webinar today about the Women's Empowerment Principles, or the WEPs as they're known for short. We're hoping that you can leave this session with a better understanding of the WEPs, including the principles themselves, how to become a signatory, why it's beneficial for businesses to sign the WEPs, and the resources and tools available to WEP signatories, that are allowing them to better advance gender equality across the workplace, marketplace, and community. Please do feel free to write any questions you may have in the chat or in the Q&A box throughout the session and we'll respond in written form. And then we can discuss some of the FAQs that appear at the end if we do have time after our presentations and panel discussion. And I'd also like to again flag that we do have a simultaneous translation to Spanish available if you just click the little world emoji at the bottom of the screen, then you'll be able to listen to the webinar in Spanish if that's easier. So to get us started this morning, I'd like to quickly introduce the teams at the UN Global Compact and UN Women who are focusing on the WEPs at the global headquarters level. So first, my name is Megan Galvin and I work at the UN Global Compact focusing on social sustainability and gender equality and more specifically the WEPs as well as the WEPs Gender Gap Analysis Tool, which we'll also discuss a bit later. And I'm joined today by my colleague Lena um, from the Global Compact who works with me on the WEPs as well as our colleagues from UN Women who are running the WEPs Secretariat. We have Diana Ranola, who's in charge of operations at the WEPs Secretariat and then Anna Falk, who heads the WEP Secretariat. So to get started, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Anna for opening remarks. Thank you so much, uh, Megan, and uh, welcome everyone to, to this webinar. Um, I think we have seen from uh, the list of registrations that um, there are new companies that have not yet uh, signed the Women's Empowerment Principles, and we've also seen that there are teams from companies that already signed and we'll try to be helpful to all of you. Uh, today we will cover, uh, we call it WEPs 101, uh, to really uh, make you understand what the Women's Empowerment Principles are about. It's the second of such kind that we're doing to really help you to uh, understand what the principles are about, uh, what the journey entails, uh, what resources and tools we have and uh, how you can join. We welcome about 100 new companies every month, uh, and we hope that to, to see many of you um, in, in the next months to come uh, joining our community. So why do they join? Um, many of them are joining because of the mar market demand. We, uh, the ESG uptake um, has helped us a lot to um, get this demand going from the market. But more helpful is actually uh, current and future talent uh, that are looking today to join companies that align with their values. 
We see the same thing, um, a strengthened uh, consumer uh, group and the broader society that are looking for companies that aligns with their values along with business partners. And we have an increasing demand uh, from investors to understand which are the companies that are progressing on gender equality and um, how can they optimize their profits, but also minimize their risk of investing in companies that do drive a gender equality agenda from a diversity inclusive perspective. Um, but we also see that they join because we offer um, a lot of re different resources and you will hear about them today. Um, the first resource, of course, is the network of signatories. We have today 5,640 companies uh, in 141 countries. So by joining the Women's Empowerment Principles community, you will join other companies with similar values to your own. You'll be able to participate in events such as today, but also many of the other uh, online and in-person events that we're organizing across the world. You'll be able to learn from others and to be able to showcase your results. And we'll hear two companies today, uh, Maite and Flavia, will talk a little bit about why they joined and why it mattered to them. Um, and we see also that an opportunity for you to really showcase that you are becoming a leader for gender equality on the market and uh, be able to kind of showcase that at, at a global uh, platform like the Women's Empowerment Principle. So we hope that the session today would help you to make your decision to join us. Um, and we are here to answer your questions. And after the webinar, we are happy to continue the conversations with you. So thank you so much. And over to um, the team to take you forward with the content that we have for today. Uh, the session will be recorded and we'll post it on our website afterwards for those that might have to, to leave or weren't uh, available to join today. So thank you so much. Great, thank you, Anna. Um, that's super helpful to set the tone for our conversation today and provide a bit of an overview of the WEPS and why it's so important to become a signatory. So as to provide a bit more background on the principles, the Women's Empowerment Principles, or the WEPS for short, were launched over a decade ago in 2010 by the UN Global Compact and UN Women to provide guidance for business on how to empower women across the workplace, the marketplace, and the community. They are grounded in the recognition that businesses have a stake in and a responsibility for gender equality and women's empowerment. And more practically, the WEPs are a set of seven principles that encourage companies to look across their businesses, understand their responsibilities for advancing gender equality and social sustainability a bit more broadly, and then to seize these opportunities for positive impact. Um, the WEPs are a very holistic framework and they're meant to act as a roadmap for companies in their journey towards gender equality. You can see on the screen here a brief overview of each of the seven principles, which we'll dig into each one in just a moment here, but you can tell that they cover a wide variety of topics like child and dependent care, equal pay for work of equal value, um, gender responsive procurement, um, zero tolerance against sexual harassment in the workplace, reporting on progress on gender equality, and a lot more, which we'll, we'll discuss now. Um, when the WEPs were established, there were only 39 signatories, and today we're excited to say that there are over 5,600 leaders who have signed the CEO statement of support for the WEPs and counting. So this clearly shows that companies everywhere now acknowledge the value of actively supporting women across their entire businesses, and that business in the private sector really does have a stake in for uh, advancing gender equality. So I'll now show a quick video that better explains the, an overview of the principles themselves. Think about the impact of a signature. Think about the magnitude of a global movement. Think about the difference you can make and the power of transformative change. By signing the Women's Empowerment Principles, you can galvanize your shareholders and stakeholders to drive change in the workplace, marketplace, and community through a framework of seven principles. Brought to you by UN Women and UN Global Compact, 
the women's empowerment principles are a roadmap for business sustainability, innovation, and productivity. Businesses by the thousands and in every sector are becoming part of this world-changing movement to advance gender equality. Businesses that become models for attracting talent, entering new markets, serving their communities, and measurably improving the bottom line. Because gender equality means better business. Don't miss this moment to make a lasting impact on your employees, suppliers, customers, and investors. Join leading companies already on the journey to greater sustainability and growth. Commit to the women's empowerment principles and make today your organization's signature moment. So now that you have a bit of a broader overview of the principles, we'll get into each of the seven principles that make up the WEPs and really what each one means. But as mentioned and as described in the video, the principles are holistic and meant to be enacted all together in no particular order or prioritization. And as we'll see as we go through each of the seven principles, mm -hmm. the issues range from a broad variety of topics. More information on each of the seven principles, including suggested actions and resources, can be found on the WEPS website, which is weps.org, and we'll share more links in the chat with you as well as we go. So to get started, the first principle is on establishing high-level corporate leadership for gender equality. And corporate leadership is an integral part of making gender equality and women's empowerment a top strategic priority for a company. It publicly signals the CEO and the executive team's goals and targets for implementing the WEPs and how the seven principles will become part of the corporate sustainability strategy, day-to-day -day operations, and broader organizational culture. It's also super important to set the tone from the top like this because it shows that gender equality is an issue that crosses all departments of uh, a company. It's not just supposed to be something that's focused on by HR or by the sustainability department or if you have a diversity um, head or department, it's not just supposed to be in that one department. It's supposed to be across the organization and every um, aspect is supposed to take on a gender lens. In signing the CEO statement of support and establishing this top level support for gender equality also sends an important message, not only to employees, but to business customers, investors, partners, and other stakeholders that advancing gender equality is a company top priority with this top level support. And finally, it also communicates that gender equality is not just a women's issue, Rather, it is a smart business strategy that will strengthen the organization and benefit everyone. Moving on to principle two, principle two focuses on treating all women and men fairly at work without discrimination. And this is not only a moral necessity, but it is also good for business. Having equal treatment between women and men in the workplace translates to better talent acquisition, higher employee retention and satisfaction, increased productivity and better decision making. And now this is even more important to realize, given COVID-19's disproportionate impact on women, we've already seen the economic gender gap grow from 257 to 267 years, or 10 generations to close this gap. So that's just 10 years in the about year and a half that we've been dealing with the pandemic. So we've also seen with the COVID pandemic that treating men and women fairly at work doesn't just mean equal pay, which of course having equal pay for work of equal value is so important, but this fair treatment also extends beyond this and includes a variety of other aspects related to the workplace, including flexible working arrangements, inclusive workplace culture, and gender sensitive recruitment and retention policies, among of course other things. The next principle is principle three, which focuses on employee health, well being, and safety. And this doesn't just include physical safety, but also emotional and well being safety. Of course, it's super important to make sure that in the workplace, there's absolutely no sexual harassment or violence in a company, as this can not only be devastating to an employee's uh, overall well being in life, but it can also result in higher costs to women in terms of lost earnings, missed promotions, 
less productivity and less courage to speak up in the workplace. And instead, the women's empowerment principles are, of course, about empowering women in the workplace. And policies in line with principle three also include safety measures against potential physical risks in addition to sexual harassment, which means um, if there's a workplace that uses harmful chemicals or materials, it's important to take this into consideration, um, as well as preventing all forms of mental um, stresses against women in the workplace. And um, policies in line with principle three also address um, aspects related to equal access to health insurance um, and health in that regard as well. Principle four is um, covering education and training for career advancement in the work. This is important that companies have trainings for all employees, again, not just in the HR department or the sustainability department, but for all employees about how the company is advancing gender equality to help better align everyone about shared values and help ensure that compliance with company policies and practices and they all take a gender lens. It's also important to have networking and mentoring programs for women employees because we've seen that there are less women in leadership positions. So it's important to have mentoring and networking opportunities to provide a pipeline to get more women in these top positions. Um, and this is also especially important in traditionally male dominated fields. Um, and actually we do have a platform for web signatories to help women become more empowered in the workplace called Webs Learn that includes personal development modules that women can take um, to boost their confidence and workplace skills. But um, I think my colleague Diana will talk about this in a little bit. So moving on to principle five, principle five shifts the focus of the WEPS from the workplace onto the marketplace, focusing on enterprise development, supply chain and marketing practices. So this principle is supposed to focus on companies reach beyond its own office and its own employees by focusing on its interaction with its customers, its suppliers, and its other businesses. So for example, some suggested actions within principle five include removing harmful gender-based stereotypes in all media and advertising, um, implementing gender responsive procurement practices, and helping women overcome barriers in accessing financial services as a few examples. Next is principle six, and this moves us from the marketplace aspect of the webs into the community focus of the principles themselves by empowering women through community initiatives and advocacy. So it's really important, again, to realize that a business's reach extends just beyond its business's practices, that employees are living in a community um, and company policies and practices affect employees, as well as their families, as well as the greater communities that they live in. Um, even the practices and policies in place in an organization have a great effect outside of the workplace and extending beyond the traditional business practices and the four walls of the workplace itself. So this principle really encourages companies to take a look beyond their um, actual workplace to advance gender equality by leading in the community more broadly amongst businesses and also by working with community stakeholders and officials um, and also using uh, philanthropic efforts and grants programs to support community initiatives and um, women leaders in the community more broadly than just the company. The last principle is principle seven, which focuses on measuring and reporting. A common theme that we see in our work with companies on advancing gender equality is the commitment is in place, but then sometimes it's lacking the necessary actions to make impact on these commitments. So principle seven encourages companies to measure progress on these commitments and publicly report, um, which not only shows um, stakeholders, employees, other businesses, the progress that the company is making on gender equality, but it also holds the company themselves accountable to making progress on the commitments that have been made. And principle seven also highlights the importance of collecting sex disaggregated data to provide a better understanding of how women are differently impacted across the workplace. And on this note, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Diana, who will talk more about the resources available to web signatories and the sign on process and then how to implement these principles. Thank you, Megan. Um, 
so yes, so just going through um, after Megan has given you an overview of what um, the, what the various principles, I'm here to walk you through what it means to um, go through like the web's journey as we call it. And the web's journey is um, basically the six main steps that you follow in order to adopt the webs. And we do understand this audience is composed of, you know, companies that have signed the webs and potential web signatories. So you could be in different stages of the journey, but know that there's no one way to do, you know, to do the to do the steps or to adopt the webs. Um, so the first step is when you're considering signing the webs. And this is when you gain the awareness of the webs and hopefully garner senior internal um, buy-in in order to adopt the webs. Um, and this is very this is very important to get senior management and, um, and executives to you know buy in into signing the webs to you know really it's a key indicator for success in order to adopt and implement the webs over time. Um, signing the webs is the actual signing of the document, the CEO statement of support, which we will show you in a little while. And this is um, the document that outlines what are the commitments that you're planning to, um, to take as you sign the webs and then eventually implement the, um, the principles. When you activate, which is the third step as we call it, or activate, this is when you bring your commitment into action. And the ways to do this is first to have a very strong action plan in order to do this and also knowing what your key indicators are, performance indicators on achieving gender equality within the company. Um, what, another way to do this is to have your self-assessment. Um, for example, there's a gender gap analysis tool um, that we have that you can use to assess where you are in terms of indicators and gender equality. And this will then help you know what it is that you're working towards and um, hopefully improve over time. Um, this is more an internal facing way of working and where you um, as a company will then decide on what it is that you need to do um, to progress in gender equality and women's empowerment um, internally. Um, when the fourth, the engage part is when um, members of the WEBS community, then you have the opportunity to interact with those external to you. Some of them are your business partners, suppliers and your community and basically making sure that it's also gender inclusive um, with regard to your work. Sustain and report are very much interrelated in that sustain is when you monitor and um, really study the, um, the indicators that you're working on to achieve gender equality. And this is when you collect gender and um, gender indicators, statistics and gender disaggregated data just to show your commitment how you sustain your commitment to gender equality and women's empowerment, and also by communicating experiences and lessons learned um, that you have achieved from your activating and from engaging in the webs. Reporting, of course, is the transparency and accountability um, that, is that is key to make progress in gender equality. Um, we do welcome you to report on the indicators. Um, uh, on your company profile page, um, which you know we we will also uh, talk about in a little while. But note that, for example, when you activate and you have key indicators for when you sign up, there are three baseline indicators that you you would um, report on when you sign in. Um, you could do it either publicly or privately. And then when you report, there there are then eight essential indicators that you may report on. It is not mandatory, but we do welcome it so that you know where you stand with regard to achieving gender equality. Next slide, please. Um, thank you. So this is the web sign-on page, and this shows you what you need to do to in order to take um, the first step or like the step to sign on the webs. It's a key, you know, in order to start your commitment um, to to gender equality and women's empowerment in your in your respective companies on webs.org. You have to download the CEO statement, which we have in 14 different languages. And then you have to fill on the quick and quick application form, which involves including C, your CEO and two contact people and information on your companies. Um, it's pretty straightforward process. 
on this page, you'll see there are frequently asked questions in case you have any questions on, you know, what are the criteria to be considered as a web signatory. And then, of course, there are steps on how to complete your application. Um, so next slide, please. We also have the web's brochure, which outlines, um, you know, all of your steps. But here is a web's toolkit. This is available on the web's about page, but it's also it also has its standalone page on our web's resources. But this outlines the various resources you may use as a company, whether it's general information about the web's, um, how to do how to fill out applications and um, how to report on the progress that you've made. Um, there's, there are thematic um, guidance notes and, um, and, and other um, information that you will find, whether in public policies, whether it's leadership insights, um, case studies, and other policy templates. And also you will have information on transparency and accountability, which is on reporting as well as other multimedia. Um, so if you move on to the next slide, please. Thank you. This shows you just a, just a brief overview of what the various documents are. The WEPS brochure, which is, um, which is the document, the second document and the second line, it will really have all the information that you need to outline um, the information on the WEPS and you know, the steps, what is the journey and different case studies from different companies and what they have done to implement the webs and different, st and different steps of the journey. Um, so one thing I, I didn't mention is, of course, like in the journey, there's no like one way of doing things. You have, you know, we understand you may be in different steps or you may do be doing things simultaneously. Like if you're a company that has a you know, large supply chain, then you, you'll probably want to look into engaging and looking at webs five. Um, in order to, um, you know, to find out what are the best practices um, in ensuring um, in, in terms of your supply chain. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So these are some of the courses that we have that Megan had referred to earlier. We have specific courses for companies, such as creating a gender action plan, which would also include a template on how to create your own gender action plan. Um, and this would then, um, you know, just guide you on what you can do as a company to take on the next steps to implementing the webs. And then there are courses on personal development. You know, one of them that we've outlined here is on boosting your confidence and um, things like that, which would hopefully help you as you progress in your respective careers. So with that, um, I'm going to pass it on to my colleague, Lina who will then introduce our panelists. So thank you. Thank you, Diana. I'm not sure if my video is, is on or not. I can't really see myself. <laughs> Um, but anyways, welcome, welcome everybody. Um, I would like to introduce uh, our panel speakers. I believe uh, Maite Delgadillo is being held back, but we do have Flavia Souza on the call with us today from Strategic Alliances. Uh, she's the Strategic Alliances Manager for Agro Latam at uh, BASF. Flavia, are you with me? Yes, I'm here. Oh. So good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So just to give you some perspective on um, who will be speaking today, um, Ms. Flavia is, as I said, the Strategic Alliance Manager for Agro Latam, and uh, she represents BAS, which is a German multinational chemical company and the largest chemical producer in the world. So the BAS BASF Group is com comprised of subsidiaries and joint ventures in more than 80 countries spanning Europe, Asia, Australia, the Americas, and Africa. We've invited uh, Flavia here today because BASF has been a signatory with, uh, first of all, UN Global Compact since uh, the inception of the organization in the year 2000. Uh, BASF is a uh, signatory of the WEPS and is also a participant of another Global Compact program called target gender equality. So welcome, Flavia. Thank you for taking time to speak with us. 
Thank so, you very much. So we felt like it would it was important for um, the prospect companies to hear a a live example of how your experience has been with WEPS, uh, particularly why the company signed the WEPS and uh, if you have any, uh, if you've witnessed any benefits to date. For sure. So first, uh, thank you very much for the invitation, Lina, and all the organizers. It's such an honor to be with all this audience here today. So we are very glad to mention that we've signed the webs by the end of 18, so three years now. And it's really a very important milestone in our journey. As you all well mentioned, when we talk about the gender equality, we are talking about a journey and we learn every day something new and we need to engage ourselves every day for something new too. So uh, I would like first to say that diversity and inclusion is really a strategic value at BASF because it seems uh, it's seen as the right thing to be done because we really wanted to represent the society. And besides that, we see that when we have diversity and inclusion, inclusion, we really are more innovative, we bring a better solutions, we bring a differentiation for our business, and that's why we put this strongly in our agenda. And fortunately, at BSF, this is a systemic topic. All levels understand and see that this is really a value for the company. And we focus on some uh, uh, affirmative actions. And uh, because of that, we have some affinity groups at BSF. And here I have the honor to represent one of them, which is women in BASF, the gender equality affinity group for South America. And besides that, we also have uh, LGBT plus. We also talk about uh, people with uh, disabilities and also the racial uh, equality. So uh, we have a kind of cross perspectives regarding diversity and inclusion. But just going, uh, doing a deep dive on women in BASF itself and how BASF sees this gender equality journey. So we have been working with that through this specific group uh, since end of 16. So this is five years now. And when we signed the webs, it was a very remarkable milestone because we could uh, just open our eyes for new dimensions and have a very structured guide to calibrate our actions and to reshape what was needed to be reshaped. And uh, as soon as we signed it, we applied for the award just to measure how we were. And uh, then we were fortunate to get the bronze award. And two years later, we are very glad to say that we got the gold award. So we see that as a journey, we always improve. And this is uh, exactly what WEPS, this very uh, structured guide gives us. This is a continuous improvement perspective. And we have the opportunity to check all the topics that we want to challenge ourselves more. And based on that, we can reshape what is needed in our action plan. So actually it's very important from this perspective and also it gives us a uh, visibility because uh, when we are part of this very important network, it gives us a chance to show internally and externally that this is really a value for us, that the gender equality is, very, is really strategic for BSF. And uh, also taking advantage of this network, we share a lot of experiences. We learn all the time and we also have the opportunity to share our achievements so far with other companies, with a lot of stakeholders. So it's really a very important element in this journey and really give us uh, a good direction, good guidelines for how to keep improving day by day.
sorry. <laughs> Uh, very interesting uh, to hear about how you, you see that WEPS has benefited the company. And so when, when you first joined, how did you, how did you go about making sure that the WEPS was implemented in the, in the company? And maybe now that you've, you've been a signatory for almost three years, how, how are you planning to scale it further? Great, good question, Lina. Uh, so we work uh, through pillars in our uh, uh, Women in BSF affinity group, and we have four pillars. One of them is dedicated to apps itself, to let us understanding deeply what is behind each dimension that the guide provides us, and also challenge ourselves to do things better. So this is one of our pillars, the webs itself. And then we also have the development, what we name it, and it is related to everything that helps women uh, uh, to develop the career and also some kinds of mentoring, um, some kinds of support to some HR activities, focusing on development itself, focusing on well-being, focusing on some specific and very relevant topics like uh, uh, parental leaves and everything related to that. Uh, and we also have a third pillar related to engagement, which is very important for us uh, to really amplify uh, all the benefits that we want to take in this gender equality uh, journey. And uh, we see that there are two publics uh, that need to be uh, stimulated more stimulated to be engaged in this journey. And we see that men and also uh, the public from, from operation, uh, from the production sites must have a different perspective so that we can properly communicate with them and engage them. So thinking about those specific target groups, we have this pillar to have actions that promote this kind of discussions and also a lot of communications so that we have those people really engage it. And as an example, we have a lot of men in the discussions right now, including in the leadership of our group. So it really helps us to scale up everything that we are talking about. And uh, last but not least, we have our fourth pillar that is related to the value chain itself. Uh, we take into consideration customers and suppliers. And in this specific pillar, uh, we foment a lot of discussions, a lot of programs, best practices sharing so that we can learn from many other companies, many other stakeholders, Holders, and also uh, we can share what we've done uh, so far. And we also think that this is a way to scale up all the benefits from this journey, because this is the way that we are impacting the value chain at the end. And that's one of our goals in the, the, this mission of this specific uh, gender uh, equality journey. So based on those four pillars, we really put in practice everything that we believe are the most important topics to be addressed. And we take the webs as a cross uh, pillars reference so that we challenge ourselves, we reshape what is needed, and uh, we really focus on what will impact more at that specific moment, which depends on the maturity that we have in all the journey. We, had, uh, we have different uh, needs in the past when we were beginning. So uh, much more general engagement and knowledge and sensibilization about the topic. But now as we are in this road for five years, we have different demands. And based on the, those demands, we may be more sophisticated in some of the actions, but we always have to take into consideration a lot of topics related to engagement, to encouraging people inside and outside BSF for this very inspiring journey. 
Very interesting. Uh, I love that you mentioned that you, you know, you, you've, you've created different messages for different stakeholders, especially communicating with men in companies, because I think, unfortunately, there's a lot of pushback um, sometimes when, when people hear, you know, woman empowerment. Well, what about the men? But ultimately, this is about gender equality. You know, we want to reach parity in the workplace on, on many different levels. And so, it's, it's, it's super interesting, the approach that you've taken, also that you are active within, within the community and, and with your suppliers and with your, with your um, customers as well. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, welcome, uh, Maite. <laughs> How are you? Thank you, Lina. Fine, thank you. So, uh, Maite, we're, we're, we've, you know, we're halfway through the, the panel discussion, so I'm going to go back and introduce you and ask you just to, to answer briefly um, the, the questions that we've been going through with, uh, with Flavia. So just to introduce you um, briefly, uh, this is uh, Maite Delgadillo. She is the Director of People Experience and Services at Scania Commercial Operations in Mexico. Um, Scania is a global provider of sustainable transport solutions, and uh, they work with vehicle financing, insurance, and rental services to enable customers to focus on their core business. So uh, Scania Sweden, the, the mother company, has been a signatory with Global Compact since 2013, and Scania Mexico since 2018. So both are quite active entities with uh, UN Global Compact and with UN Women. And um, they're also participants in um, not just WEPS, but target gender equality. So Maite, welcome. So happy to have you here. Um, you. The purpose again of this panel is, is to basically provide some uh, exper you know, experienced professionals with uh, who have spent time on, on really introducing WEPs, expanding WEPs within the organization to share their, their experiences and, and best practices. So we'd love to hear from you, Maite. What was your experience um, with the company signing the WEPs and what, in your opinion, have been the, the clear benefits to, to Scania as a business? Thank you, Lina. Thank you, everyone. I'm sorry for the delay. I have a, a problem with my agenda, but um, well, uh, we signed, as you said, the, the webs in 2020 after committing in being the first generation of organizations who actually was part of the program uh, target gender equality. And um, I think benefits, I can, I can say that we have a lot of, of benefits, but uh, the very first one is that we actually have a uh, in that moment, we believed that our practices were uh, really good practices in terms of uh, gender equality and, and that our culture was really strong in terms of gender equality as well. And that um, uh, because of the kind of company we are, we are a Swedish company, as you said, a global um, scanning in Sweden and all around the world is uh, really strong in, in gender equality, um, actually. We do believe that as part of our culture, right? So uh, we thought that we were going to to be um, in I don't know in the top of the tops, if, if may I say it so. But uh, when we actually realized that we were not uh, so far as we could be, it was like um, like a great awakening. You know, it's like uh, oh my god, there are several things that we can still do and that we we have never seen, right? So uh, the first thing that we learned is that this tool is really, really helpful to realize this company, where are you uh, actually in terms of gender equality? Uh, where are you sitting? And what are the next steps for you? So it was really, really enrichful experience of, uh, of actually having some uh, comparisons of, of what we do and what we can do actually. It's, it's, it's it's really like a guide that can give you step by step uh, what can you do in order to achieve the goal that you have as a company or as a society. I don't know. It depends on who, who is applying the, the tool. But if I said so, the first one was like an, an eye opening in, in terms of, of gender equality. That's great. Um... The next question I have for you is how does it work? You know, you, you, you said how much it's inspired um, 
the company to kind of look within and change a lot of the a lot of maybe the, the, the policies and practices of the company, but how does it work really like how how do you implement it on the ground, how do you. Um, how, how if you if you will be scaling it, um, how do you plan on scaling it in the future, is it something that grows with the organization. Yeah, um, thank you, Lina, for the question. We have, um, I think we have uh, four years with the Sustainability Committee, which actually was uh, gathered with uh, a lot of um, people wanting to help, wanting to do something uh, better for our world and for, uh, for the environment and for the women and for the children and for the society and with high expectations and really wanting to, to help. But we have no idea what does really a sustainability committee has to do, right? So we, we get close to the global compact. We sign, as you, as you said already, the, um, with them. And then uh, we, we have now a clear path on what to do, on which actually, on which principles that we want to focus. So I have a, a person which is uh, really passionate about the, about the, um, actually all the themes of, about the, the global compact, all the principles, and, and really wanting to help and to make the difference as a company. So she is the one that is actually uh, responsible for the sustainability committee. And we have different, um, uh, areas like, for example, one is specifying in community, uh, helping the community. The other one is about the environment. The other one it's about um, human rights and, and labor rights. And we have different um, areas of the committee. And one of them is actually uh, gender equality, right? And it's uh, um, the name, the correct name of that area. It's actually diversity. Right, it's not only about uh, gender equality; it's about diversity. We have two people in the in the area that actually is working. So we have defined the areas in which we wanted to to work as a company. Then we have to we have to find where do we want to get in each of the areas. What do our what could we expect of the, the work of that areas? So we made a maturity model of each one of them. This is what we want to do, but this is where we are. And these are the steps to get into where we want to be in the next three years, four years, five years. It depends on the area that we are working on. So uh, that were the, the first steps. And in terms of gender equality, it's part of the diversity area of the company. And we, as I said, we have a really strong culture on that. So we are, for example, making different uh, focus. We have to focus on the internal culture of the company, but we have to focus also on what are we doing for the society? How are we actually making impact in the society with our stakeholders, with our customers, with the schools, because we have a lot of contact in the schools, with the family of our employees? Because uh, uh, focusing on that, then we can actually add more and more people into, into this um, area of diversity. So. After we know which are our partners, I already mentioned customers, stakeholders, universities, of course, employees and the, the family of the employees. Then we decided what are we going to do actually to get that people, first of all, know, get knowledge about what is it, how, how we eat this, how we can learn, what, what do we have to do in these terms, right? Because it's not uh, only talking about diversity, it's not just a uh, female or male. We have a lot of things on diversity. So um, we define which are our uh, focus groups. Then we start implementing a plan on how to get to them, first of all, new. So we have been developing some trainings, for example, internally, we have something which is called uh, skill capture. Skill capture is a lab that actually uh, Scania Sweden uh, made in order to capture the diversity and the skills of the different kind of people, regardless their gender, regardless their preferences, regardless anything, but just the competences. So we have already trained 100% of our leaders on how to focus on diversity and skill capturing instead of uh, seeing other things. We are expanding this into the whole company. Every single employee is now taking this um, lab because it's a lab in which they cooperate and they uh, interchange different points of view and experiences. And it has been really amazing because in one part they, 
uh, the lab is asking you, the person which is actually directing the lab is asking you what? Tell me one, um, one thing that you discovered that actually uh, was acting as a stopper in terms of diversity. What uh, as a stopper, but as a mental stopper, you know what I mean? It's like things that you have in our mind, things that we have in our mind that we really are not aware of. And in that lab, they get aware of the things that they have in their mind in respect uh, of diversity and gender equality. So it has been really enrichful. Uh, of course, we have been working with the web tool and <clears throat> focusing in which ones do we want to actually uh, get better in. We cannot focus in all of them. So we are uh, starting at selecting one or two subjects in which, into which we'd want to work. And actually in that area of the committee, sustainability committee, they start developing an action plan, right? So, uh, the, but the very first thing, if may I said, is actually to start training people and letting them know what is gender equality, what really is gender equality, and how can you actually um, do things different? And the first thing is to think different, to be aware of what are you thinking in respect of that thing. So this is basically what we have been doing in uh, with uh, big examples. And um, if may I said uh, something which has been very, really important and actually makes the difference, it's that leadership is committed into that. If you don't have leadership in an organization committed into gender equality, diversity, or whatever you want to reach, then it's really hard because uh, the example that actually a leader gets when he behaves or when she behaves, not only by talking, but by behaviors, then it, it really makes a difference. So I think that is something really key that have helped us as uh, an organization to start moving forward into the gender equality. Absolutely. Um, and I'm sure Flavia agrees uh, in her experience with uh, BASF. B -A -S -F. Um, so that actually leads perfectly into uh, my final question. This is probably the most sensitive question, but I think it's the most pertinent to most of, of our attendees here today. And the question is, how did you go about securing the internal buy-in? And as we know with WEPS, you need the buy-in from the top, really, and then, and then it trickles down. And there's a reason for that. Um, as you said, you need, you need leadership engaged. If leadership is not bought in, then you know, this is a moot point. So if you have any, you know, if you can share with us any tips, any from your experience, um, Flavia and, and Maite, uh, for, for the participants on the panel. Yeah, for sure. This is a very important topic to have the buy-in within the whole company. And we completely agree with Maite and what you said, Lina, because uh, it's based on leadership engagement at the end. So we really think at BSF that the tone and example of the upper management makes the difference. And as an example of that, we have women at the executive committee. So we are represented there. It makes all difference. We also have have in this executive committee, uh, each of the, the big leaders are sponsors of the, the, the affinity groups that I mentioned before. So one of them is related to gender equality. And uh, like Scania did, we also have a special program for education, for diversity and inclusion for the leadership, uh, which is very important to bring uh, some uh, uh, reflections about the bias and what can be changed about that and very important that we have a specific key performance indicators related to that so uh, this is uh, from a quarter basis just communicated to the whole company in South America and we have uh, two specific KPIs key performance indicators related to gender uh, equality and as it goes to the whole company so this is a concrete measure message from the upper management that this is a real guideline and the real culture within the company. So we think the combination of those elements, but is specifically talking about this example and this tone that the upper management brings to all this communication makes all the difference to have this buy-in. 
And what about Scania, my team? What do you do there? I think it's, uh, it has been not so hard for us because as, as I mentioned, it's part of the Scania culture, but um, we are in Mexico, right? Uh, part of uh, Latin America, we have a culture. We, we have some gaps in, in terms of that general culture uh, speaking. And um, it has been a really interesting path because uh, just to add something, uh, as, special ingredient in this. We are now an automotive company where of industry that in the very uh, in the past, it was uh, known as a many industry, right? Because uh, it's a lot of engineering and technicians and, and uh, workshops in which actually people is, is fixing the trucks and the, and the buses, our trucks and our buses. So it's a little, you get a little bit dirty in your hands, like physical dirty. So it was like think that it was a man industry in the past. So um, it was a, a really amazing path to, to, first of all, to hire the first uh, technician, the first technician, woman technician. It was like uh, really inspiring and it was a challenge because there are not a lot of women that actually want to get in that work. There are not a lot of women outside that actually are starting the career to get into that kind of jobs, right? So it's not only part of the organizations, it's part of the society as well in, with which we have to deal with. But um, so with a special program, we started with scholarships for women, special scholarships for women. If they wanted to join actually this school, then uh, we were going to, we are expecting to pay part of their career. And after that, they can join the company. It didn't work very well, if may I said so. It was not like, um, um, a boom, like, like we expected, well, we get some candidates. So when we hired the first technician, woman technician, and the first um, leader from a workshop as a female, we made really a lot of marketing, internal marketing and external marketing for that positions. And they were they starting to, to give some testimonials on to change their mentality of, of the people actually inside the, the, the organization, but also outside the organization, the students, our stakeholders, the customers, because they were used to, the, to, to, to handle all things with men. And they were, some of them, they can doubt, be doubtful on if a woman can do or not that kind of job. But um, as we have it as part of our culture, I think their testimonials, they were key for the success of the, of the company. And now we have a lot, uh, much more women working in that kind of positions. Of course, it's not the, uh, the highest percentage, uh, but still we, we have some of them. And of course the KPIs as Flavia says, but uh, also the normal KPIs that we have of numbers, defining the special numbers of, but then I, I think uh, what, what uh, really helped us is, uh, in, in, into this, it was thinking of any other KPI, any other event that happened in the company, because in the company, everything starts and ends with people, as I always said, then we get into the gender equality KPI. For example, if uh, we have, um, I don't know, the, the customer, sat the, the satisfaction index of the company. We have an index of the satisfaction, right? We, we, want, we know what we want to reach, but then why, do we, why don't we open that index into gender? How satisfy a male and woman? For said so, or oh, uh, turnover, which kind of uh, people is living also by gender, but but all kind of diversity, right? Are females living? Are females living certain kind of jobs, certain leaders, certain I don't know sides? So everything we get into KPIs like a second wave of KPIs. We 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 try to do it into gender, and it's surprising what you can find actually. Yeah, I mean, great point. I think you don't know what you don't count, right? You don't know what, if you're not looking for something, but if you are primed to, you know, to, to see if there is a real, you know, gender issue or a diversity issue in general, it needs to be kind of cross-cutting across, across the company um, kind of practices and, and, and all of that. Anyways, uh, we are at time. This was a very interesting conversation. Sorry, we, I think we, we won't really have time for Q&A, but if anyone wants to stay after, maybe we can answer some questions. 
Um, I just wanted to thank uh, both Flavia and Maite, very interesting point. I, I love that you, you know, both of you are really um, taking and, and owning the WEPS principles and, and really thinking of it from a uh, workplace, uh, marketplace and community perspective. I think this is, you guys are the change makers that, that we need. We know that, you know, it's, it's never an easy journey, but um, we're happy that you're, you're taking it uh, with us. And, and we hope to invite um, the other participants today to, to join the 5,000 plus companies and over 140 countries in, in committing to um, the WEPS principles. And we are here to support you. Uh, my colleagues, Diana and Megan, will be sharing shortly that this presentation, uh, the slides as well, and any, of, any other information that you might need uh, to ease this process in your, in your own company. Thank you very much, everybody, for, for participating with us today. And a special thank you to Flavia and Mike. Thank, thank you, you all very much, much, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you.